Hey, my name is Bo. In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can change your personality for the better to attract more success into your life and to become a more confident, happy, peaceful person. So I became interested in this topic when I was about 19. That was about 11 years ago now. And I became interested in this topic because I was really unhappy with who I had become. I had a lot of problems in my life at that time. I was going through a severe, dark depression. I had severe social anxiety. I had health problems. I was just feeling really lost and alone in, in my life at that time, and I did not like who I had become. I, I really wanted to change myself. And so I started looking into personal development and psychology and trying to understand how I could become a more confident person because I knew that if I remained the person I was, my future was not going to look very good. And the sad thing is a lot of people on this planet don't realize that their personality and their character traits, people don't realize that those things can be changed. A lot of people think, well, this is just who I am. This is just how I am and that's how I'm always going to be and this is just me right? They make it part of their identity. And that brings me to my first point, which is you have to recognize that a lot of the beliefs you have about who you are, a lot of the emotions you feel, the negative emotions, are really just stemming from mental programs that were ingrained into you from a very, very young age. For example, in my life, I remember when I was very young, I was told very often that I was shy. I was told by my family members that I'm that I'm shy, like, oh, he's so shy. Oh, this is Bo. He's he's shy. I would get introduced like that. My teachers would call me shy. When I went to school, people would say, why are you so quiet? Why are you so shy? Everyone around me was telling me this, and it just became part of my identity. I just started to believe that that's who I was. I'm shy. I'm the quiet one. I'm the one who doesn't express themselves. I'm the one who doesn't speak up or speak their mind. I'm the one that doesn't have many friends or whatever. I just started to believe that just because everyone around me told told me that. And because I believed it, it became who I who I was. It became me. I became the shy one, the quiet one. And you have to question whether these things are who you are or it's just something that you have been told or you've told yourself so many times that you just believe it and you just act in accordance with that belief just automatically. You don't even question it anymore. You have to start to question these things. I, that, was a, that was a negative belief that was programmed into me, but I, I also had positive beliefs programmed into me, and most likely you, you did too. For example, when I was a kid, I was told a lot that I was very smart, and people around me always told me I was smart. My family members told me I was smart. My teachers told me I was smart. And that became part of my identity too. So because I believed that, I started to do things and act in accordance with that belief. I started to do things to reinforce that identity. So I would get good grades in school. Uh, that was the main way that I reinforced that identity is I would get really good grades in school because I'm smart, right? That's what smart people do. So the first step is really just to start questioning your beliefs about who you are and start to ask yourself if it's really you or it's just something that was programmed into you. It's like a software program on a computer. A software program can be uninstalled and we can install new software programs on a computer. Our mind is basically the same. You may have grown up with a very limiting belief about yourself and, and who you are. You might have very disempowering perspectives about yourself. You might have negative thoughts about yourself that were just programmed into you and you just repeated them so many times that it just became this automatic thing and you just started to believe that. You just started to believe this is who I am because you've told yourself that so many times. It might have started with someone else telling you that, but then eventually you start telling yourself that and you just start to believe it and it's, you start to not even question it anymore. But you have to see that this, this is just a software program and you can uninstall the software program and install a better program. And so once we recognize this, we have to start seeing how these mental programs are manifesting in our everyday life. And one of the first things that I did when I was trying to change myself and become more confident is I started to recognize my body language. I started to recognize how my body was following my mind. My negative thoughts were manifesting in my body language. And I noticed this. Um, I noticed that because I had a lot of negative thoughts about myself and because I believed I was shy, 
then my body would follow my mind and I would tend to like not look people in the eyes when I talk to them. I would slouch. I would uh, cross my arms sometimes like I'm protecting myself, which I was kind of uh, unconsciously protecting myself. I would cross my arms. I would, I would slouch. I would put my head down. I wouldn't look people in the eyes. I would have tense shoulders and tense jaw. I would have a lot of tension in my body. And that was the the negative thoughts manifesting as anxiety, manifesting as not wanting to look people in the eyes, not wanting to express myself, uh, wanting, wanting to sort of hide and disappear. And that would manifest in my body. And I would recognize that. I would see that I was... I was acting that way um, unconsciously at first, but once you become conscious of it, that's when you can start to change it. So what I did is I started to become more aware of my body language. I started to become aware when I wasn't looking people in the eyes, when I was looking down, when I was slouching, when I was crossing my arms. And then I would just gradually, you know, over the months and years, I would just start to practice different types of body language. I would start to practice looking people directly in the eyes. I would start to practice walking with my head held high. I would practice relaxing my shoulders and putting my arms down at my side. Instead of crossing my arms or having tense shoulders, I would just practice relaxing them. I would practice, you know, walking with more, a little more pep in my step, you know. I would, I would practice walking like a confident person would walk. And I just, over the, over the years, I just practiced this enough times to where eventually it became more and more natural. And then I noticed that when, I, when my body language was positive, my mind was also in a better state. When I walked like a confident person, I naturally started to think more like a confident person. So the body will follow the mind, but the mind also follows the body. It goes both ways. If you can stand up tall, put your head up, look straight ahead or slightly up, if you do that, you'll notice that it lifts your mood. You feel better just by doing that. I wouldn't say this is like the solution to everything. This isn't an end-all be-all, but it is one of the first steps that I took, and it's one of the first steps that I believe you should take because it's one of the simplest. It's, it's helping you just become aware of how your mind and body are connected and how the body will follow the thoughts of the mind and the beliefs of the mind, and also how the mind will in turn follow the body. A next step, one thing that I also started doing was role playing in my mind. I started to think of how I would act if I was the person I wanted to be. How would I go through my day to day life if I was a more confident, successful version of myself? How would I show up to work? How would I walk into the building when I got to work? How would I greet people when I got to work? How would I uh, socialize? How would I, you know, what kind of attitude would I have when I'm doing what I'm doing? How productive would I be? Uh, how friendly or cheerful would I be? Would I be more outgoing? Would I be uh, more assertive? Um, you know, how would I do household chores? Would I do household chores while complaining in my mind? Or would I do them while singing a song and feeling happy and grateful, you know, I just started to imagine myself as the person that I would want to be. And the more I started doing this, I noticed that I gradually started to become the person that I was imagining myself to be because it, it was just like changing the software of my mind. It was all a software program to begin with. So by imagining who I wanted to become and see my, seeing myself in my mind be, being that person and actually seeing myself living that life and being that person, it just started to override those old software programs with this new software program, this new version of me. And remember, the body follows the mind. And the mind also follows the body. So by imagining who you want to be, you'll naturally start to act more like that person. And this can start a chain reaction that totally changes everything about your life. When I started doing this, when I started becoming aware of my body language, and I started imagining myself as who I wanted to become, I, I noticed pretty much everything about my life changed. My, my, my desires changed, my preferences changed, my habits changed, because this new version of me 
does different things than the old version of me. This new version of me doesn't work a nine to five job. This new version of me doesn't complain about life. This new version of me is grateful. This new version of me is assertive, is confident, goes after what they want, isn't afraid to speak their mind, isn't afraid to express themselves, isn't afraid to take massive action. This new version of me does different things than the old version of me. So when you start to reprogram yourself to become that new version of you, you will naturally just start going in a different direction in life. Your habits will change. And when your habits change, your results will change. Your, your circumstances will change. New, old things will fall away. New things will come in to replace them. There might be a period of loss where you lose friends. You lose people you were once close with because... You, you no longer resonate with them. You might have had friends in the past that like to complain and gossip, but you're no longer that person. You're, the, you're a person who's positive and likes to look at the bright side of life and has a positive attitude about things. So you no longer resonate with those people. And it's, it's not a bad thing. It's okay for, for the old things to fall away. The old things have to fall away for the new things to come and, re and replace them. The old things fall away so better things can take their place. So just to recap, first recognize that your identity, who you believe you are, is mostly just a set of conditioned programs and responses that have been ingrained in you by the way you were raised, by the culture you grew up in, by your environment, by what people told you when you were younger, by what you told yourself and started to believe. It's just a set of programmed belief systems and just like the software in a computer, those belief systems can be deprogrammed and you can program in new ones if you desire. Next, become aware of your body language and how you're acting when you go through your, your life because the body will follow the mind and the body will show you what you're thinking. If you have negative body language, a uh, poor posture, that can be a sign that you're thinking negative thoughts or having a negative perspective on things. Next, practice role playing in your mind and seeing yourself going through your ordinary life in your mind as a different version of you. How would that better version of you act? After that, you start practicing in real life. So whatever you're seeing in your mind, that new version of you, start practicing acting that way in real life. And then realize that it's going to be uncomfortable and that negative feelings are going to come up. And that's not a reason to go back into your comfort zone and hide and, and go back to your old identity. Just accept that the negative feelings are coming up. Be gentle with yourself. Be compassionate. Realize that it's okay. It's okay to mess up. Uh, you're never going to learn if you don't make mistakes and, and fail. That's just this is how it goes. The first time you practice being that new version of you, it's not going to feel very comfortable or natural. You might mess up. You might say something stupid. You might be awkward or whatever. And that's okay. This is part of the learning process. Be gentle with yourself. That is the way to start to release those negative emotions. And if you're gentle and compassionate with yourself, eventually those negative emotions will come up less and less. You'll have a more lighthearted attitude and you'll be able to face the challenges of life with a positive attitude and you won't be resisting life all the time and it won't feel so difficult. So that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please just give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe. And let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for a future video that you might want me to make, a topic you want me to talk about in a future, future video. I'd love to hear your ideas. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.